We interviewed Dr. Carol Mandel, the Chief Scientific Advisor to the UK Government's Foreign and Commonwealth Office. Dr. Mandel is a noted astrophysicist and head of physics at the University of Bath. We spoke during her visit to Singapore for the third UK Strategic Dialogue on Science and Innovation as part of the Singapore-UK Partnership for the Future. In terms of human exploration, I think as a species, humans have always pushed the boundaries. They've always explored, they've always wanted to understand the world, the universe around them. Um, even ancient cave dwellers 15,000 years ago were looking up at the night sky and trying to understand how it changed, why it changed, and what it meant for their, for their life on Earth. And I think in the last 100 years, what we've seen is a huge revolution in our ability, not only to conceptualize the universe, but also to invent the technology and the engineering, um, to actually push the frontiers and go beyond our, our terrestrial um, home. Um, so I think in terms of you know the, the space race that began obviously um, post um, Second World War in the 1950s and the 60s and up to um, the, the moon landings. I think that enthused a, a whole generation of scientists and engineers and we're now seeing a, a, a revolution in that because obviously we have rovers on the surface of Mars, we've seen phenomenal photographs come back from the surface of that planet and our understanding um, the formation and evolution of planets in our solar system um, from those sorts of robotic missions, um, New Horizons for example, that mission that was launched by NASA that's gone out um, to the distant edges of the solar system, taken phenomenal photographs of Pluto and then gone beyond to actually see what the primordial um, material is that really formed the solar system. Again, completely revolutionizing our understanding of our environment. So to go from then on to human um, exploration and pushing those boundaries, the idea of maybe colonizing um, non-terrestrial planets, that again is a new frontier and I think it's very much within the spirit of, of human exploration, whether that's the kind of exploration that I do where I'm happy to sit firmly on the surface of the earth and use telescopes to look at the distant edges of the universe, or whether it's our um, incredibly accomplished and pioneering astronauts who actually will go up and live above the earth together internationally on the International Space Station or potentially go beyond um, to future, future colonies. So in terms of humans being ready to be a space-faring species, um, I, I think we have always been explorers. How that then transcends into, a, a, if you like, a normal activity, going on holiday to the moon or popping up to Mars, I think we still have huge challenges, particularly in terms of human health. So we don't yet know how to keep astronauts' bones strong and healthy um, in microgravity environments. We don't know how to keep uh, muscles of, of astronauts when they go on long space missions um, safe and healthy. And I think that's at the frontiers of medicine, physiology, um, and, and sports science, actually, we have to have some frontiers that will be um, pioneered there so that we can actually keep our humans healthy when they travel. Um, that's in addition to the sorts of um, propulsion um, and the technology that you need for the spacecrafts themselves. So I think that humanity's future has always lain in the stars. Um, our ancient astronomers looked to see how the heavenly bodies moved, and it was really looking at the night sky that helped us to discover the fundamental laws of physics that we use in our everyday life today. So whether that's Newton's laws of gravity, whether it's Einstein's general theory of relativity, that all came from studying the stars and planetary motions and how the universe works. So I think in some ways, in a broad philosophical sense, our future will always be in the stars. I think for me personally, there are two sides to whether we want to leave this planet behind and go and colonize other planets. We may do that because we're pioneering explorers, but I think we also have um, a beautiful planet that we live on here. And there is a real drive that we should be focusing on being custodians of the planet that we have here. Those other planets are pretty hostile <laughs> and actually taking care of the one we've got should be part of our pioneering spirit to go elsewhere as well. Space missions are, are hugely challenging and they bring in really the frontiers of science and technology. When they're first conceived, often the engineering um, is unknown. Actually, engineers don't yet know how to solve the problems that need to be solved in order to realize the missions. And I've always been hugely impressed by the dedication of all of the space mission teams. I mean, some of the medium-sized missions that are to send scientific missions up into space might have a 20-year lead time. So I think the real key is the, the big science questions that really drive the development of those missions. So in fact, one doesn't just sit down and say, I think I'll invent a 
mission today. There's a whole framework that comes from a fundamental science question, a really big question that one might want to address. And then do we have the technology currently to address that? When the answer is no, that's what then drives the development of a programme. And that programme may often increasingly be too large for one particular nation to be able to fund and realise on its own. And that's where we have global international collaboration. So it's those teams of scientists and engineers working together with that long-term vision and goal. And it might not be that the people who first conceive of it will actually be the ones who realise it at the end. Um, and that's also the, the beauty of that kind of science and innovation, that one thinks beyond one's own immediate needs and interests and desires, and you're actually doing it for a, for a wider benefit for mankind. So my experience when I give public talks, particularly to, to young children, the wonder of the universe really is, is innate, I, I think. So that I get the hardest questions from the youngest children. And I think their excitement and their fascination, their creativity and their imagination, the way they can conceive of concepts that actually often um, you know, their parents will be, will be impressed by the questions that their children are asking. Um, questions that go beyond often um, what their teachers are teaching them in school. I think that wonder and that spark, when you can carry that through, ultimately to commercialization, is, is the secret. Um, so it's not one thing or the other. In fact, not just thinking about commercializing space, but actually thinking about what the big scientific questions are and the, the global challenges we want to address. And I think the other side of that, of course, is that we should be good stewards or good custodians of space. The more we launch up into orbit around the Earth, the more challenging an environment we create. So, for example, you know, human-made space debris is becoming an increasing problem. That will limit future generations' abilities to realize their interests in space, whether they're commercial or whether they're pushing the scientific frontiers or a combination of both. So I think that we have a responsibility as well as an opportunity to use space um, for, for humankind's commercial benefit um, or just scientific knowledge, but we also have to be very mindful um, as we're, we're launching our satellites into space that we, we, we clean up our mess. Mm -hmm.